One night in the city of Tampa, Florida, a gangster named Bobby Saint was going to buy a gun illegally with his friend Mickey, a man named Otto, acting as an intermediary between Bobby and the illegal arms dealer. Otto then checked the money Bobby brought, and when he was sure that the money was legit, the transaction began. But all of a sudden, they were surrounded by FBI agents. Otto suspected that Mickey and Bobby were spies, he then pulled out his gun, and consequently, an FBI agent shot him to death. The incident made Bobby panic, and then he tried to convince the arms dealer that he was not a spy. However, they couldn't just believe it. Fearing that his father would be mad at him, Bobby then tried to fight back, but the FBI agents shot him to death. Luckily, Mickey survived the incident. Some time later in a morgue, someone rose from the dead. It turned out to be Otto. He was not killed in the earlier incident thanks to the bulletproof vest he was wearing. He was actually an undercover FBI agent who had been assigned to investigate weapon smuggling. His real name is Frank Castle. He later got a surprise party from his peers because he had successfully carried out his last mission. Jimmy, Frank's friend, then congratulated him and gave him a wristwatch as a gift. An agent then came and told him that one of the victims, whose name was Bobby Saint, was the son of Howard Saint, a mob who owned the casino. But Frank didn't care about that, and then he said goodbye to his friends and said that he would prepare for a vacation with his family. Later on, Mickey was kidnapped by Howard's man, who goes by the name Quentin. Mickey then told Quentin that it was Bobby himself who wanted to be part of the arms sale because he was interested in its huge profits. Quentin then asked who was the broker in the sale, and Mickey answered that the broker's name was Otto, and he added that in that incident, Otto was also killed. A little while later, Howard arrived with his son John. Filled with anger because his son was killed, he then killed one of his men for failing to protect Bobby. The man was supposed to go wherever his son went. Howard then told Quentin to track down the person who was responsible for his son's death. The following day, Frank returned to his family home. After meeting his wife Maria, Frank persuaded his son, Will, for the umpteenth time to move to London. Frank promised him that this was the last time because his job was done. Meanwhile, Howard watched over Bobby's lifeless body. He was so sad and couldn't accept the fact that his son was dead. Howard then asked Jimmy about Otto and his men, but Jimmy refused to tell him for his own safety. Jimmy then asked Howard to leave the matter to the police. Howard just fell silent and then walked away. Apparently, behind his quiet demeanor, he mobilized his men to find out who was responsible for his son's death. Before leaving for London, Frank organized a family reunion in Puerto Rico. They rented an inn on the beach. While walking on the beach, on the other side of the beach, they saw a man named Manuel who lived on a remote island nearby. At that time, Manuel was refueling his boat. Manuel was known as a quiet, mysterious man. Later that evening, Frank and his extended family had a dinner party together. The next day after Bobby's funeral, Quentin informed Howard about Frank, the FBI officer who disguised himself as Otto. Quentin knew that Frank would be moving to London next week, and at this time, Frank and his extended family were holding a family reunion on a beach in Puerto Rico. Howard then ordered Quentin to kill Frank. However, Livia, Howard's wife, asked him to kill Frank's entire family as well. Back in Puerto Rico, Will gave Frank a black t-shirt with a skull on it. Despite the creepy picture, Frank liked the t-shirt his son gave him. They then joined the other families who were enjoying the beauty of the sea. Meanwhile, on the other side of the beach, Howard's son, John, and his men arrived, and they were carrying guns. In the middle of the party, Will asked his mother to leave the party as he had something to show her. They then move away from the crowd. Meanwhile, Frank was invited by his father into the house to show him his gun collection. As they were chatting, a gunshot was suddenly heard, followed by another. The situation became chaotic. Maria then told Will to hide under the boat. Frank took the gun his father gave him and shot a man who was about to enter their house. Frank and his father tried to fight back. Frank's entire family was slaughtered. He then fired at a gas tank, causing a huge explosion. As the fire raged, Frank and his father came out of the house. Frank was shocked to see his entire family lying lifeless. Someone then shot Frank's father from behind. Frank then attempts to attack the enemy, but someone grabs him by the neck. With the last of his strength, Frank's father stabbed the man who strangled his son. In the meantime, Maria and Will decided to run to the car to save themselves. However, one of John's men found out about Maria's attempt. Frank then tried to protect his wife and son who were confronted by the mobsters. John and his men then chased Maria. After Frank managed to paralyze the bad guys, he quickly caught up with Maria on a motorcycle.
With great effort, Maria tried to escape from the chase of John's men, who kept shooting at her car. As a result of the gunfire, Maria's car was flat, causing it to roll over and be thrown away. Maria and Will staggered out of the car and headed to a house to call for help, but there was no one there. When they saw John's car approaching, Maria and Will ran towards the dock, but halfway there, John's car sped up and crashed into them both. Frank got off the motorcycle and ran as hard as he could. How horrified he was to find his wife and son lying lifeless. He then fired at John's car which was moving towards him. Unfortunately, his legs and arms were shot, making him unable to stand. Frank tried to attack again, but he ran out of bullets. John then kicked and hit Frank many times, and then he pushed him away. Still not fully content, John fired another shot at him, while Quentin poured gasoline around him. The fire started, and then an explosion occurred. Frank's body bounced off and fell into the sea. With that done, John and his men left the place. Miraculously, Frank survived. He leaned against a rock, and when the evening came, Manuel came to his rescue. Howard and his family toasted their success in achieving their revenge. Livia then invited Howard to dance, but Howard turned her down because he was busy, and then he told Quentin to accompany Livia to the dance floor while he discussed his business with his client. During the discussion, Howard's gaze couldn't escape from Livia and Quentin, who were looking quite intimate. A few months later, Frank returned to the murder scene with Manuel. He entered the house, somewhat hobbled, and then he took Maria's and Will's pictures. He then took some of his father's weapons. Afterward, he headed to the beach, where he found the t-shirt that his son had given him. He thanked Manuel for saving his life, then said goodbye to him because he was going back to Florida for something important that he had to do. Arriving in Florida, Frank rented a room in an apartment to prepare the necessary weapons he would use for his own mission. He also modified his car to make it bulletproof. Here he has three neighbors, Joan, Dave, and Bumpo. Frank's first target was Mickey. That night, Frank kidnapped him. He then asked Mickey to give him some information about Howard's family, otherwise he would burn his back. The fearful Mickey finally told Frank about Howard's business with the Toro brothers, who were running the prostitution and casino businesses throughout the country. Howard helped the Toro brothers launder their illicit money. Mickey also told him about Howard's family habits, starting with Howard, his wife Livia, his son John, and Howard's right-hand man Quentin. In fact, Frank only wanted to scare Mickey, he didn't actually hurt him. After realizing that Frank was a good guy, Mickey offered to help him. Up until now, Mickey had been forced to work in Howard's house, and he was treated like a slave. He wanted to be free from him. Based on Mickey's information, Frank then spied on Howard and his family's activities. He photographed and recorded their habits. He then took a tombstone bearing his name and placed it on the golf course where Howard played his rounds. Later that day, he went to see his colleague in the police department, Jimmy. His colleagues were, of course, surprised to see him still alive. He expressed his disappointment with the police for not capturing a single person responsible for the deaths of his family. Jimmy then offered to take Frank to a safe place for witness protection, but he refused the offer. He himself will uphold justice in his own way. Frank then secretly went to Howard's bank, where the Toro brothers' money was deposited. He then forced the officers who were there to obey his orders. He then gave his suitcase to them to be filled with money, then opened the window of the building and ordered them to throw the remaining money from the top of the building. Everyone on the street then scrambled to take the money. Before leaving the bank, he killed them. The following day, the Toro brothers came to Howard. They were angry that the gambling money from their casino was being thrown away on the streets. The Toro brothers then held Howard accountable by asking for a guarantee, otherwise, they would cut off their partnership with him. The other night, Dave and Bumpo tried to kick Joan's noisy boyfriend out of their apartment. Joan's boyfriend asked her to open the door, but she refused. Dave then threatened the guy, saying that he would report him to the police, but the guy attacked him instead. Frank then opened his door and asked him to leave, but instead he came at Frank with a knife. With one blow, Frank managed to make him helpless. Dave thanked Frank and added that no one had ever stood up for him. Shortly afterwards, Joan came out of her room and thanked Frank. Joan tried to get to know him, but Frank ignored her and left. One of those nights, Frank went to the movie theater where Livia used to go. He set up various tools so that he could get into Livia's car without getting caught. After successfully opening Livia's car, Frank found Livia's earring. By hacking the phone in Livia's car, Frank then called Quentin and told him to come to the Wyndham Hotel. Frank threatened him by saying that he had some intimate photos of Quentin and his boyfriend.
In a panic and not wanting to let Howard know about the photos, Quentin finally complied with the request. Afterwards, Frank drove to the Wyndham Hotel in Livia's car and deliberately parked the car in a no-parking spot in order to get a ticket from the police. After making sure Quentin came to the Wyndham Hotel, Frank then returned with Livia's car and parked it in the same spot as before. Some time later, Howard wondered why Quentin came late to his house. Mickey, who happened to be there, then intentionally mentioned that he had seen Quentin at the Wyndham Hotel. Howard then saw Quentin talking to Livia, and they looked very affectionate. Howard then asked if Quentin had just been to the Wyndham Hotel, but Quentin denied it. The next day, Frank had breakfast at the restaurant where Joan worked, and Bumpo and Dave were also there. A while later, a strange man with a guitar came into the restaurant. The man's name was Harry. Harry kept looking at Frank sharply, and then he opened his guitar case. Frank's alert mode was activated, and he had his weapon ready. But apparently, Harry just took the guitar and started singing. Harry said that he knew Frank. Before leaving, Harry said that he really wanted to sing at Frank's funeral. After finishing his meal, Frank drove his car, and when he arrived in front of the bridge, he had to stop and wait because the bridge had just been lifted for the ship's passage. A speeding car suddenly hit Frank's car from behind. Apparently, the person driving the car was Harry. He then got out of the car and shot at Frank's car. Swiftly, Frank rolled down his bulletproof windshield and sped away from there. However, a few moments later, Frank's car rolled over while avoiding a woman who happened to cross the road. With a lot of trouble, Frank got out of the car. Harry then came and pointed his gun at Frank. Frank then took a knife, and with just a simple press, the knife shot and stuck in Harry's neck. Frank then drove off with Harry's car. One night, as John was about to make another delivery of the Toro brothers' money by boat, he heard strange noises. After investigating it, John discovered that there was a bomb under the boat. Fortunately, he managed to jump just before the bomb exploded. All the money in the boat was burned. Through the bushes, John saw Frank wearing a t-shirt that his son had given him. Elsewhere, Howard was furious when Quentin told him that the Toro brothers' money had burned down. A short while later, the Toro brothers came to his office, and both of them asked about their money. Howard couldn't accept being blamed for the incident, as he had always successfully delivered their money. The Torum brothers finally gave Howard one more chance. The panicked Howard, who was threatened by the Toro brothers, then told Quentin to call a Russian hitman to kill Frank. Back at Frank's apartment, Dave called out for Frank, and then asked for his help to chase Joan's boyfriend away again. As soon as they arrived at Joan's room, it turned out that Joan's boyfriend was not there. Joan and the others just wanted to invite Frank to have dinner together. After dinner was over, Bumpo and Dave left Frank and Joan alone as they were going to make some dessert. Once they were gone, Joan expressed her feelings for Frank. She said that she liked him. However, Frank couldn't reciprocate her feelings. Frank then returned to his room as he reminisced about his wife and son. Afterward, Joan went to see Bumpo and Dave, who were busy making dessert while listening to music. A few moments later, someone knocked on Frank's door, and Frank opened the door without a second thought. It turned out that his guest was a Russian hitman sent by Howard. The big burly man then proceeded to beat him up. Frank managed to stab him, but it seemed he didn't feel any pain at all. The Russian then strangled him. Joan and the others couldn't hear the commotion that was happening in Frank's room because they were dancing to the music. The Russians beat him to a pulp. Frank tried to fight back and hit him with an iron rod, but his efforts seemed to be in vain. His blows had no effect on his opponent at all. Frank was exhausted and helpless, but his opponent continued to attack him. He was then thrown into the kitchen, and the man choked him again. Despite being strangled, Frank was still able to grab a hot pot and pour it over him. Frank then pushed the man off the top floor, and he eventually died. Once things calmed down, Joan stitched up Frank's wounds as he refused to be taken to the hospital. Some time later, Dave saw John, Quentin, and his men enter the apartment. Dave then suggested taking Frank away, but there was no other way out of the apartment. Miraculously, there was a secret door in the apartment, and Dave accidentally managed to open it. After they finished stitching up Frank's wounds, they moved him into a secret room to hide. The room was only fit for Frank and Joan, so Dave and Bumpo had to face John and his men. Quentin asked Dave about Frank, and Dave replied that he didn't know about it. Quentin then took a pair of pliers from Frank's toolbox and asked again where Frank was. Dave's answer remained the same. Quentin then pulled out the piercings on Dave's face one by one until they were gone with the pliers, but Dave still persisted and said that he didn't know where Frank was. 
In the end, Quentin decided to walk away because he didn't get any information. Before leaving the apartment, John ordered one of his men to stand guard in front of the apartment. He then notified Howard and told him that Frank was still alive. Howard then ordered all his men to gather in a club. As soon as it was all safe, Frank came out of his hiding place. Bumpo told him that there was still one of John's men standing guard at the front. Frank then took a very large knife and stuck it in the man's head. Frank then saw how poor Dave's condition was. Frank asked why Dave was willing to suffer to protect him. And Dave replied that he already considered Frank part of his family. So whatever happened, he would protect Frank. Frank then asked Bumpo to take Dave to the hospital. Soon after, Frank prepared his weapons to continue his revenge. Joan tried to stop him because she thought it was dangerous. But Frank didn't care at all. He was ready to die. Frank started his plan. First, he went back to get Livia's car while she was at the movies. He then called Quentin and told him to meet him somewhere. Frank threatened him again with his scandalous photo. With Mickey's help, Frank would provoke Howard's emotional state. Mickey went to see Howard and told him that Livia had gone to the Wyndham Hotel on the same day that Quentin had gone there. As proof, he talked about a parking ticket in Livia's car. Howard, who was triggered by Mickey's words, got angry. He then asked Mickey, who happened to be the cleaner at Quentin's house, for the key to the house. After Quentin left, Frank sneaked into his house to place one of Livia's diamond earrings inside the house. A little while later, Howard showed up and started breaking into Quentin's home. He found Livia's earring in the room, and it was enough proof that Quentin and Livia had been having an affair behind his back. When Quentin returned home, an angry Howard stormed in and attacked him, whereas the clueless Quentin didn't defend himself. Quentin ended up dead at Howard's hands. When Livia returned home, she was shocked to see her stuff thrown away by Howard. Howard then said that he knew about Livia's affair with Quentin. Livia denied it immediately because it was impossible to happen given that Quentin was gay. However, Howard, who could not believe his wife's explanation, started beating her. Howard then took her somewhere. On their drive, Livia still tried to convince Howard, but he was blinded by his jealousy. Howard then threw Livia onto the railroad tracks just as a train passed by, and the train ran over her body. Meanwhile, Frank assembled some of the guns in preparation for the attack on Howard's headquarters. Frank killed the guards with arrows, then planted bombs in some of the cars. Following that, he broke into the club and planted a bomb at the entrance. Out of the blue, someone from upstairs asked the bartender for drinks, and Frank took advantage of the opportunity to plant a bomb in the ice bucket. An explosion ensued upstairs. Frank then appeared and shot everyone who was still alive. Howard was able to escape by using the elevator, and one of Howard's men fired a shot at Frank. Frank then calmed the second floor and found John, who was unable to move because he was crushed by falling concrete. Howard ran out of the building, and Frank soon caught up with him. He then fired at Howard's leg. Frank then revealed that he was the one who set up the trap about Quentin and Livia's affair that eventually led Howard to kill them both. Frank then pulled Howard's legs, tied him to the trunk of the car, and attached a bomb to it. Frank ignited the car, and the car drove itself to the car lot. He then pressed the button to activate the bomb, and the explosion happened, one explosion followed by another. Howard was burned to death. Interestingly, the flames from the explosions are neatly arranged to form a skull shape. After completing his revenge mission, Frank returned to his room and looked at the photo of Maria and Will. Frank then took a gun to kill himself, but just as he was about to pull the trigger, he had a vision of his wife's face, and he finally called it off. The following day, Frank decided to leave. He said goodbye to Joan and asked her and the other guys to check the closet in his room as Dave returned from the hospital. Upon Dave's return from the hospital, Dave, Joan, and Bumpo open Frank's closet and find a lot of money stored inside. Frank himself is somewhere, deciding to become a punisher for people who commit crimes. Then the film ends.